Assalamu alaikum everyone, I'm Sadat and I'm here with brother Fayaz and we want to pay a short tribute to our late brother Dr. Izzuddin Jad who was the host for many many years of the TV program the Toronto based TV program Reflections on Islam. I think every Muslim kid <laughs> that grew up in the the 80s maybe yep. he was there in the late 70s too i'm not quite sure but all of us 80s kids yep. and 90s <laughs> kids before there was the internet before what there was satellite tv how did you stay connected to ramadan how did you stay uh, connected to the azan and things like that it was this tv show and radio show reflections on Islam. every sunday morning and i've invited brother Fayaz because he has a little bit of a behind the scenes information you were fortunate enough yep. to have worked uh, with uh, brother Azadeen Jad for a short time yeah. and you had some experience on, on the sets on the TV sets Ma I guess of yeah. reflections on Islam yeah mashallah so in alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudhil fala hadiya la wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika la <coughs> so yes, brother Sadat. Uh, honestly, um, so I, have a, I, ha I do have some history with uh, Dr. Azadeen. Um, so first of all, I, as I, you mentioned, as an '80s child, we grew up on the show every Sunday morning. Yep. And uh, before you know, us Toronto kids, you know, had Eid festivals to go look forward to. Uh, Reflections on Islam had the children's Eid party after Eid al-Fitr, you know, and as he referred to it as the feast after the fast. And so mm -hmm. that was my first connection. And then I began to volunteer actually uh, with the Eid party. As I got a little older, obviously it's for meant for children. How did it happen? You just phoned them up from the phone number? Oh, no, no. They, they asked for volunteers uh, for the TV, okay. from the TV program. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so uh, you, you, but yeah, you, I believe you called in sure, and yeah. uh, submitted your name. And uh, yeah, then you were called up and uh, invited to uh, attend the, the training and whatnot. So yeah, so I worked as a volunteer. Obviously when I got older, like, I mean, it was, this is meant for my, like my younger brother and sister, but for me, like was, you know, come on. So I started volunteering. So every Every Eid, I would uh, be at the party, mm. and this is right at Mark Garneau Collegiate Institute in Thorncliffe Park, where, right. which has a very sizable... A lot of Muslims. 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, when I was finishing high school, actually, um, he had the scholarship program for one scholarship for community college, one for high school, and one for university students. And uh, alhamdulillah, like, I mean, I had to bring a couple of reference letters, uh, transcripts, obviously, but alhamdulillah, I was fortunate enough, blessed enough to win the high school scholarship one year mm. and uh, the following year after I finished first year university he you know I was looking for a summer job and uh, he invited me to work on the show nice it was more of like a it was more of an internship more than yes, anything yes. to work behind the scenes yeah um, so I got to you know firsthand see him work with him and I he didn't film the show while I was working there okay but he was preparing for the show right, right. and so there was him there was his administrative office assistant who was there, Sister uh, Zalina, I believe, and then there was another brother, I think Muhammad, who was the art director, who was mm. responsible for, again, some of the children's content that appeared on the show as well. Yeah. And, and also his uh, his son was there as well. I got to know him. He was, his son was a little younger than me, mashallah. Uh, but yeah. Do you remember his name? Uh, man, no, but uh, I mean, wonderful child, wonderful. Yeah, but like, he was a, also a high school student, you know, as well. So yeah. So I mean, brother Azadeen Jad had been uh, running this uh, show, Reflections on Islam. I don't expect many people outside of Canada to perhaps have seen this show, but. I want you to think this, I want you to think before Shabir Ali, most of you have heard of Shabir Ali, before Shabir Ali, before any other of, of the TV programs on Islam. Any of the TV personalities. Like, this was it. So, uh, like, so this has been running for 40 years. Um, let me give you an example. Back in 1983, it's Ramadan time, right, in Canada, uh, in Toronto, in the greater Toronto area. You, you don't have satellite TV, you don't have the internet. If you want to break your fast to not just the, the you know, the minutes on the clock, if you want to hear the azan, you want exactly. that feeling of being back in the Muslim world, exactly. on, he would have a special Ramadan Reflections on Islam TV program. Yes, would. It would come on every day. It would start, what, maybe an hour before iftar time. 
and there would be Quranic ayat recitation of Quran and hadiths and things like that. We actually Sometimes, had it at Suhoor time too before Fajr. I That's didn't right. know that. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then right at iftar time you would hear the azan and it was just a very nice way of connecting, feeling connected with other Muslims in the Muslim world. Uh, our parents obviously grew up with that feeling of hearing the azan and that's when you break the fast. You don't look at the clock, you don't look at your watch. So he did this for the longest time and I always say, uh, and I said this before he passed away, I was telling my wife that this man, mashallah, he, I mean, he gets 11 out of 10 for consistency. He, he, he's taught me about what consistency is. Sometimes maybe too much consistency because I think the format of the program over the years, maybe it could have evolved in, 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 in a different way. It, I mean, it, it looks dated now, but con like he did it. He did it consistently. By the way, he was in an Egyptian background for those who are curious. And another thing I want to say about him is that he always gave just, you know, Quranic ayat, Hadiths, yes. ayat, yep. hadiths, and at most he would talk a, a, a little about, in, in very general terms, he would talk about how the Sharia is meant to be a, a, a complete way of life, yeah. like not just a political thing, not just a religious thing, a complete way of life. But beyond that, he didn't get into sectarianism and he didn't no. get into this group or that group. So no. anything you want to add to that? Well, first of all, um, I mean, everything what you said is true. Uh, he was, to, to qualify one thing, actually, uh, he was really a one man show, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he, he really was. was the engine and uh, a big concern for him always was the financing. Uh, yes. Because unfortunately, it really was donor driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, really was donor driven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was not by any means affluent or anything but this was just a work of passion he worked hard uh to put it together and he really was doing all he, he didn't his team was literally just one or two people aside from him putting things together so it really was a humble reminds me of a youtube channel that i know take a guess <laughs> but yeah no no comparison there no comparison but yeah, yeah yeah but but uh, that's a good segue actually this is before youtube so he was yeah, doing yeah, everything yeah. mechanical yeah, like yeah. i mean he had to get all the equipment everything it was not yeah. as easy as it is now where you could just prop up a camera and you're no. online and connecting no. with millions no, no, no. No, uh, he had to, you know, uh, like I said, fund everything by himself, bring everything together. Yeah. Um, one of the special uh, memories I have of uh, Brother Azadine Jad, of course, uh, was when I finished my internship with him. It was the end of the summer. Uh, I was invited. We had a special get together, you know, to recognize the work I had done. Mm. And uh, I, I still, I was gifted a, a very nice present. Awesome, awesome. Uh, it was a, a very special pen with my name engraved on it and um you know for those who that's a really nice memory I still have and it. memento and i've never keep, used it yeah. i've never formally used it you know because you again the ink still runs i'm sure it does it's a very special pen it yeah. has like i said my name engraved on it it's yeah. you know so how long ago was that, was that? oh this 20 was at least 20 years more than that oh uh i'm going to say 20 almost 30 28 yeah. years ago because i had just finished first year university and i was in uh in the summer time doing my internships i just probably turned uh, 20. Hmm. when you mention finances it reminds me my only memory to be honest honest with you or personal meeting or encounter with brother Izzuddin was uh, I was also uh, in my teens I was in my late teens maybe 18 or 19 and there was a re reflections of Islam fundraising dinner that happened somewhere Mashallah. in, in, in yeah. a, like a hotel ballroom I was there once yeah so I, I don't even remember like uh, how it happened as a teenager but but I mean I went mm -hmm. you know and I, I saw for, with my own eyes uh, wealthy uh, Muslims many of them wealthy Egyptians or wealthy Arabs Behind the scenes, these are heroes as well too, oh, who, are, who are donating. 100%. And you know when at these fundraisers, when they start and they say like, okay, who is going to commit uh, $20,000? Sure. And you're like, yeah, come on, let, let's, let's move on to $2,000 maybe, right? I saw it myself, man. I saw uh, like a middle-aged Arab lady. Mashallah. I just want to throw this in there, right? Not, she wasn't wearing hijab. Okay. And when he made that call, now I don't remember, 20000 10000 she put up her hand right away and I was Subhanallah. like, Subhanallah. And it was a reminder to me that, you know, someone might be practicing one aspect of the deen, but not practicing another and vice versa. Someone might not be practicing a certain aspect of the deen, but they might excel us in well, some other aspects. This is, this is a very fair, very good, good point. I'm glad you mentioned it because one thing that I'm sure a lot of people will be surprised or confused about is how is a pioneer, and I mean that in the truest sense of the word, a pioneer of this yeah, yeah, ummah, in the true sense, pioneer, uh, yeah. you know, of this uh, community, of this ummah for this deen, 
you know, uh, lack a beard, ha not have a beard. He was clean shaven, and a, he, I mean, I understand that. And for whatever, first of all, some political background. I mean, he is Egyptian, and unfortunately, Egypt. because of the circumstances to this day, um, you know, it's the you know the military over there prevents and they arrest and question people who are trying to grow any semblance of a beard. So there was a guy named uh, <coughs> Anwar Sadat as well, and there, there was yeah, there were lots of political issues there. Uh, so yeah, um, so because of that, unfortunately, they grow up in an environment where they, while they love the deen in, in a very genuine, real sense, unfortunately, they are forced to be brought up in an environment where they can't outwardly show it. So many people who may not be from that generation will see someone like him and be surprised to see that how can this man be such a worker for the deen or whatnot when he's clean shaven, not having a beard, astaghfirullah, or not wearing a topi, a cap, a kufi, whatever. I will say this. Regardless, you know, he has done way more in his life than I can ever say about myself without without doubt. Um, and for whatever, you know, for whatever reason he did or didn't have, mm. you know, or with the means to practice uh, some elements of the sunnah, may Allah forgive him. And we, you know, yeah, I yeah. come, I'm going to be very honest with you, and I'm saying this uh, because I'm guilty of this. When I was around that age, believe it or not, when I was working with him, I was of those who was very judgmental. And if I someone who didn't have a beard and was proclaiming themselves to be Muslim, I'd be like, hm. yeah, brush them off, you know, yeah. or like, you know, okay, well, whatever. Like, I would measure their iman sure, by their beard. by the length of the beard. And right. I really am regretful, but again, this is my zealousness and ignorance and immaturity at that time. Now I can say for sure that this man's, you know, uh, work towards the deen, his mm. effort, it far surpasses countless Muslims, and uh, starting with myself. So, you know, like, may Allah forgive him. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just thought of that right now. You're right. I mean, just even visiting back, uh, visiting Egypt, you know, in the 70s, 80s, I mean, even arguably now, right? That beard can can, can land you in a lot of trouble as well, too. Uh, uh, may Allah bless him for the work that he I did. Mean, like, he really set a great example for us. One uh, advantage uh, of being on just, like, national cable TV, and towards the end, I think it was on Vision TV, that he was coming of course the present trend and the foreseeable future trend is social media and YouTube and all that but uh, here's the thing that one of the advantages of the TV and, he, and again he was on it I'm sure for 40 years or 40 plus years right is that if I stopped even like an average white non-muslim Canadian who's in their 60s or who's in their 70s mm -hmm. and I showed him a picture of Azizad and I Azizad and I said you know have you ever seen this gentleman on TV talking about stuff? I bet you there's a good chance man that that like mainstream Canadians have at some point come across and skim watched this brother's program <laughs> No, mashallah, like uh, he was just ubiquitous in many ways, but at the same time, he kept a low profile. Like he was yeah. not, he was in, this, in the sense, like, I mean, he was everywhere in the sense that he was the face of the deen on media. Like when you thought about Islam, reflections on Islam, you mentioned the radio program, yeah. their Eid party I mentioned. Um, one of the things I also wanted to very quickly put in here that he was a pioneer, not just because he had a TV program, but because, again, I, I'm, I'm speaking as a child and I have that special connection. He mm -hmm. thought of the children before others did. He had the Eid party, and you know, you know, we grew up in an environment of Christmas and presents yeah. and birthdays and whatnot. But we didn't. That's outside of our faith tradition. Mm. But he brought it within Islam, and so that is my connection to him. In that, wow, I felt excited to celebrate Eid. Uh, here's an analog, maybe for the Americans, right? For the American kids, they might remember Sound Vision. You know, in the 1990s, mm. Sound Vision, Islamic programming for kids, Adam's World. Again, this predates that. You know, storytelling for the right. kids. He, he was doing all of exactly. that in English, exactly. like in the 80s and everything. Before yeah. Adam's World, there was his, you know, children's. Uh, uh, stories that we yes. have, like the story of uh, Suleiman Alayhisalam and Belqiz, mm. or the Surat Al Fil, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll try to put up some pictures of, oh, from yeah, that from too. All, yeah, 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 we'll try to put up some of those. But stories. he had the TV programs, and yes. before there were Nasheed artists today that we have today, before Sami Yusuf and I'm, you know, and, and any others that are very well known. I'm not yeah. in tune with that. He had the very famous uh, Nine Nine Names of Allah Nasheed, you know, mm. uh, that everyone would look forward to, and uh, believe it or not, people would order uh, especially uh, exclusively from his program. Yeah, yeah. you know, so. 
So again, he was a pioneer in the real sense and he really tried to serve the Ummah as best as he could. And he really had a lot of insight and foresight as to what this community needed. Again, thinking about the next generation, thinking yeah. about children, thinking about the youth. You know, and one of the things, by the way, that we d talked about when we sat together, you know, on the on my last day, mm. when he gifted me the pen was he, he actually inquired about my education. Like, what are your future plans or whatnot? He wanted me to succeed and do well. And, you know, like at that time I was, you know, trying to pursue medicine as a career. Mm. So uh, he was very supportive of that yeah. and very encouraging. And, you know, that's, you know, mashallah, again, with his Islamic background, you know, he also wanted to see a very strong infrastructure for the yeah. Ummah, right? Yeah. He wanted yeah. to see us educated. He didn't want us to see us struggling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, mashallah, we have so many gems and so many stars in the community, but perhaps Brother Azadin Jad the most reminds me of that hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about how the consistent action is the one that is like most beloved uh, by Allah. So you're very fortunate uh, to have sure. met him, you know, Jazakallah Khair for sharing some of those memories. I hope some of these stories, some of these references resonate with some 100%. of the 80s kids out there, especially in Canada. One very last point. Absolutely. Uh, whenever I worked on his show, we always made salah. Masha. We always made salah in Jannah. Wallahi, I'm saying this. You know what? That sounds so basic. That sounds so basic, right? But it's but it's not sometimes no. because I'll be honest with you. Um, I mean, I don't know whether I should disclose or not, but it's more like when I was 16, 17 and stuff. I always had a passion for Dawah in high school. I was, I was doing the Ahmadidat stuff with Christian friends. But I wasn't praying, you know what I'm saying? Oh. I wasn't praying. Yeah, and this is not uncommon. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this is not uncommon, you know. So there are du'at and people who are out there. And, you know, I came across a video, I think it's the Muslim mom. I think her name is the Muslim mom. I really, I, I would love to rip off what she did because uh, at the beginning of the video, she said, if you haven't prayed Salat yet, if, if, you're, if you're in need of missing Salat time, please turn it off, pause it. Go pray Salah and then come back Masha and watch Allah. the video. Masha so Allah. no, these basics are extremely important. It's good you threw that in there. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm, I'm very serious. Uh, because some people might even question, oh, but yeah, but does he do this? Does he pray? No, mashallah, no, no, no. he's a believer. May Allah bless him. While he was working, while he was Absolutely, working, yeah. you know, and this is the reality. And uh, not once did he scold me, even though I came late a few times. Not once did he uh, ring me out yeah. or say anything uh, cross. He definitely was a, you know, like he was a professional. Yeah, and and this was the old school. Of course, it was different times. People dress better as well too this I, i'm pretty sure this is the old school and included in that is the albanian uncles and the bosnian uncles recently um an albanian uncle like that just passed away he used oh, to attend no, no, no. Mila Grand from jannah yeah. what well, i was gonna say the old school of wearing the tie and suit on eid wearing the tie and suit on juma oh, and wow. whether it's sunnah or not like the, the thing is that was their way of honoring the masjid you know what i mean they were dressing their yeah, best yeah yeah that was their way their of honoring the masjid so may allah likewise honor them and grant them uh, a high place in Jannah, Brother Azadeen Jad, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of the uncles and aunties, the whole our team, predecessors, the whole everybody yeah, the whole team. who's worked behind the scenes. And in fact, one other thing I wanted to say, many of the modern uh, contemporary, some of the uncles mm -hmm. and elders of the imams of our community, uh, Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick was a guest on yeah, his show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Ahmed Kutti used to be a guest on his show, you know, uh, the late Dr. Muhammad Sabih Mahdi was on his show multiple times. So very, very well-known du'at and imams and shuyukh in our community are, are from his generation were actually guests on his show and that was a staple of his show that they would have a they bring on a guest to talk uh, in particular certain topics yeah yeah and, and th there's so many uh, of these pioneers who are kind of you know reaching that elderly age may Allah you know preserve I mean, them but sometimes I think to myself nobody knows who's gonna die first who's gonna live first well, but sometimes I think okay you know how many tribute videos am I gonna do but with this one when I saw no one else did a tribute video I mean there's a lot of posts mashallah on oh. Facebook but I thought we just gotta put something out there just to remember him and to honor him. Um, I think we'll leave it at that. I hope some of these memories will uh, resonate with you out there. Uh, most importantly, please make dua, of course, for his uh, for his departed uh, soul. Uh, and after that, please share your memories in the comments. If you have any memories of meeting Brother Azadeen Jad uh, or of, uh, of especially of his shows, Reflections on Islam, you've got Ramadan memories you want to share. Put them there in the comments. May Allah bless you all. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallah khair, man. Thanks so much for sharing. Appreciate it. Take care. No problem. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum. Before we conclude today's program, please share the dua with us that says, Allahumma hdina lil iman wa basirna bil haq wa a'inna ala an nahya mu'mineen wa namuta mu'mineen. Amen. O God, guide us to the faith, open our eyes to the truth, and enable us to live as believers and die as believers. Amen. Until next time, may the peace and the blessings of God be with you at all times. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.